there and welcome to the Accept channel and welcome to this full youth guide review of the Kala Ukadelic Sugar Skulls Ukulele. Now these were made in 2019 and thereafter Kala changed the Ukadelic line that used to be based on the Makala Dolphin and Makala Shark and then changed it to be based on the Waterman and they no longer do that. So this is a discontinued model um, but it was new and it was given to me uh, by a friend, the ukulele fairy. She knows who she is. And anyway, she gave the, me this one to hang in my school. I teach at a Spanish immersion school and the Dia de los Muertos is a big deal. So this is gonna be hung in my school and perhaps used on occasion, but realistically not used that much. And we'll talk more about why that's the case. So um, ultimately, it's a Waterman and it's an old Waterman. And before I go any further in this review, let me state that Kella has recently, this is in October, 2022, they've recently re-released the Macala line, or the, sorry, the Waterman line. And with that, because they are Macala Watermans, um, with that, they are now have an adjustable saddle and there's different bracing on the inside. So, uh, Today's, as of October 2022, brand new Macala Waterman models are very different than the old ones, and I have not reviewed those yet. I have reviewed other Watermans in the past, including the Learn to Play uh, Color Chord Ukulele, which is basically a Waterman, as well as this one, and also the Concert Scale, which was better than the Soprano. But just so you know, there's a new version of the Waterman before we go any further. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to do the normal things that I do in a full Uke Guide review. You can see the summary at ukesf.info on the Uke Guide page. There is a one-page summary of what I go over in this video if you don't want to watch the video. So that's always an option for you if you're interested in just the data on the instrument. Otherwise, we are going to talk about some subjective categories on this instrument. Then we'll talk over specifications. I'll summarize it and then give it a youth guide rating out of five possible ukuleles. So let's get going with the subjective categories. First of all, cost. They were $50 new, still are, although I've seen them even higher than that, probably because they are no longer made and people think that they can get more for that. I don't know why you would pay more for that, but nonetheless, about $50, $49.99. In terms of value, that's actually a little bit lower value for what you're getting for an ukulele that is sort of flawed um, in its design. Doesn't sound that great. Doesn't play incredibly well. Um, with all those things factored in, $49 is too much. So the price exceeds the value. In terms of build quality, it's an ABS plastic ukulele. I would not leave it in a hot, hot car in the summer particularly in uh, the South or in warmer climates, Southern United States or in warmer climates, um, because it could potentially just melt on you. But otherwise, you get the same problems with most of the Soprano Waterman, which is high action that you cannot adjust, and then as a result, a very poor playing experience. And remember the Waterman, was a tribute to the Maca Ferry Sopranos, which I have reviewed on my channel, thanks to the gift of a Maca Ferry Soprano that was given to me by my friend, Eukster Brown. Um, he, he gave me one and I've had a chance to review it. That was a very different instrument than what Calla made out in tribute to it. And it's kind of sad because it had a lot of potential and maybe the new version of the Waterman does it, but I, I don't know if it does. So um, with that in mind, the, you know, you end up with an ukulele that's, that's really hard to play. It is not in tune as you go up the neck, but some people accept that. Schools, school teachers, uh, people going to the beach, people that just want sort of a rugged ukulele. And boy, $50 is still a lot to throw at an instrument that is so flawed. So, you know, I, I don't know. I just, there are so many better options now. And I think that's why Kella had to update the models yet again uh, to deal with that action issue. And hopefully they've now solved it. So the build quality, 
there are critical issues here because you can't adjust the saddle or the intonation. And that's, that's really the problem. Now, in terms of what it looks like on the inside, we'll take a look, but there's not gonna be much to see. So let's, let's go do that. All right, here we go into the KASU Skulls ukulele, which again is just generally a waterman. We're not gonna see much in here. You can see the bracing and how it's braced underneath. The new watermen are braced differently, but you can see that bracing there. And you can just see that it's shiny plastic. You also don't have any solution down here for a strap button. So do keep that in mind if you wanna put a strap button in. You can drill a hole and super glue it in. That will probably work, but also is probably not the greatest solution. Now looking at, if I can get back far enough and angled it up, trying to get a look at the bridge support up here. And there it is. You can see the bridge support right there and how that supports the bridge. Looks like it is potentially screwed in from this side or molded there one way or another. Not quite sure what to make of those. And that's pretty much all there is to see. There is no bracing on the bottom here of the ukulele. All right, let's look at the upper bout. All right, as we're looking at the upper bout here, don't expect to see a lot. I don't have a whole lot of room to maneuver here. There is where the neck meets the body and it doesn't go through into that cavity, which is interesting, as many of the plastic ukuleles do. So that's the construction there. There's really just not much to see here. And that was really all that there is to see when you're looking at the inside of a waterman, or in this case, the Ukadelic by Kala, the KASU Skulls model. All right, now that we've talked about build quality, let's talk about appearance. The appearance is a real positive here. Now, you may not like the skulls, but again, as a part of Mexican culture in particular, and the Dia de los Muertos, um, this would be a great ukulele to have during that time of year, or at all times of year. You'll find the sugar skulls and the skeletons being sold in uh, mercados throughout Mexico throughout the year, sometimes to tourists, but also to Mexicans as well. Very, very neat holiday remembering the dead. And of course, the movie Coco is centered around that entire event. If you haven't seen it and you'd like to have uh, a very much more friendly, family friendly introduction to Day of the Dead, Coco is a great way to learn a little bit more about it. And then of course, you can do more research on top of that. Anyway, when it comes to appearance, you have some really cool designs with these ukadelic ukes. And um, this is no exception to the rule for that. So I gave a little bit higher rating in terms of appearance, even though, again, it's just a standard ABS waterman as well. Now, in terms of availability, they are discontinued, but you can still find them new and probably used in some places if you just look a little bit online. Now, in terms of playability, this is where the instrument sort of is going to start to get panned in a real negative sense. It's an average 35 millimeter nut with standard 35 millimeter spacing, and it has sort of a traditional C-shaped neck. Perhaps it's a little flatter than some of Akala's other instruments, but it definitely could be thinner. Um, it's, it's still towards that C-shaped neck, although just a bit flatter than some other Akala's. Um, the action is noticeably higher at the first fret and 12th frets than you would like, making it really tricky to play. My fingers are getting caught up in it because it's just too high. So the build definitely does not ease the playing here. Now in terms of sound quality, there are some overtones popping out. That, that G overtone is really ringing but otherwise there's not a lot of sustain. So it's surprising that the overtone kicks out that long, even though the other sound more or less stops on the instrument. It's, it's kind of interesting. So it's, it's very plasticky sounding, very tubby. Um, 
it's not horrendous in terms of sound quality, but it's also not great. So compared to a dolphin or a shark, which the ukadelic line used to be a part of, um, the sound is going to be worse. So if you, you can't really find the sugar skulls in the older prints or, you know, as a print on the older uh, ukadelic line, but if you found an older ukadelic, I think you would like it better. And it's worth trying the new ones, which I think for sure have a solid top. Not sure about the rest of the body at this time. Haven't reviewed one um, since the newer Ukadelics also have come out. Now, the other thing to mention is because the action is so bad, the intonation is also messed up. So uh, the C really shows it. There's a C. Here's the octave higher. I mean, incredibly sharp. And I'm not pressing, I'm pressing down as close to the fret as I can with as little pressure as I can. Very, very, very sharp. So as a result, that non-adjustable action messes with your intonation and it ends up being a really poor sound quality the higher you play. Up the neck, it just is going to be out of tune and just not enjoyable to listen to or really to play. Now in terms of volume, it's got good volume, but just muted sustain, except for one harmonic that's popping out. Very strange with that. And of course, it's more plasticky and boxy and dark. Um, lacking overall sparkle, different strings might help. And there is some harmonic sustain on the instrument. Now, one of the things that I do with these videos is I let you see what I'm hearing by using the app Tonal Energy Tuner. So I'm pulling that out on my iPad right now. And we're, what I do is I play the C chord into Tonal Energy Tuner and let you see what I'm hearing. So here we go. As you'd expect, a lot of low end sound there that doesn't sustain very long. And that one harmonic isn't picking up on the iPad as well. Not sure why, but it is definitely there just, just ringing, 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 ringing that one particular harmonic. And I guess it just likes that one frequency in the body of this ABS ukulele. All right, now that we've gone over the subjective categories, let's do the specifications. It is a soprano scale instrument with a scale length of 13.75 inches from nut to saddle, not to saddle. It has 12 frets, 12 to the body. It does have side position markers that may wear off in time, but it at least comes with those. And the body style is a traditional double bout. The soundboard is ABS plastic, as is the rest of the body and the instrument as a whole. The fretboard is ABS plastic. The bridge is ABS plastic. Um, it does not have a radius fretboard. It has a molded ABS plastic nut and a zero fret up there, which is supposed to help intonation, but it really can't help intonation if your action is that high off of the frets. Just not good in that case. Um, it does not have a compensated saddle and the saddle is not adjustable. So you're stuck with what it has and it's really, really low. So you can't really shave it off either. So you couldn't like somehow melt it down. That's not going to work either. So the problems you have with action just are not fixable on this instrument. The other thing I want to say about the bridge is that it is a slotted bridge, which will make string changes easier for beginners. And that's to be appreciated. The finish on this is a matte black, just the plastic. And the overall length is 20.75 inches from the top of the crown to the tail and it weighs 14.3 ounces, which is lighter than it actually seems. It has open chrome geared tuners with smaller buttons. The action at the first fret is over one millimeter. I can't measure any further over uh, with my string action ruler because it can't clear the, the nut. So I can't get far enough over to tell you exactly how high it is, but it's higher than one millimeter at the first fret, and it's at four millimeters at the 12th fret, which is just way too high. 
The nut width is 34.98 millimeters, so basically 35 millimeters. And the spacing of the strings at the first fret is 8.77 millimeters between each string, which is 29 millimeters G to A. Uh, the 29 isn't so bad, uh, but again, maybe it's time to check out if you're gonna rework the instrument to make it a wider nut, like a 36 millimeter or 38 millimeter um, while you're doing it, why not? And the other thing I checked is the depth of the neck at the third fret. So while it does seem to be a little flatter than some other callas, like wood callas, for example, it's still pretty deep. If you go to the top of the strings at the third fret to the bottom of the neck, it's 21.76 millimeters. And even if you lost a millimeter there due to adjusting the action, if you could, it would still be pretty tall there. Um, so it feels thicker and, and wider than it needs to be. It could be a better profile. And since you're making it out of plastic, you have every possibility to do that. Now, what I didn't mention in terms of value is that it also comes with a gig bag. Let me show you the gig bag here. In fact, I won't even think I would call it a gig bag. I would call it just a drawstring bag. And they've been coming with these for a while. I will say, however, that these are a better option than what I've recently seen with a diamond head ukulele and the bag that comes with the diamond head. So I appreciate this more than that. But really, the whole idea of this is to have a way to haul around your ukulele and protect the strings a little bit. That's the only purpose to use a bag like that. And this ukulele doesn't need a, really a nicer gig bag, but still it might be nice to have. So if you buy one of these, don't. Maybe check out the new Watermans, not sure about them yet. But if you buy one of these, you might want to buy a gig bag just for the sake of having a nicer gig bag with it. All right, now that we've talked about the subject of categories and the specifications, let's summarize the instrument and give it a U-Guide rating. In 2019, Kala switched up its ukadelic line um, away from what used to be a dolphin and a shark sort of model into a waterman model. And they released some new prints, including this Sugar Skulls print. Um, since then, they've changed ukadelic construction yet again. So I think they got some negative feedback and changed it. And as I'm recording this video, just recently, the new watermans have also come out where they now have an adjustable saddle and some other things with the potential of being a far better instrument, probably because of the competition in the plastic ukulele space that never was there before. So um, this is an attractive ukulele, but it is flawed, which the issue is that you cannot adjust the action and the action is ridiculously high on the instrument, making it really hard to play um, and out of tune as you play up the neck. If you're looking for a plastic ukulele, uh, spend a few more dollars, you know, $30, and buy yourself an Enya Nova U concert. Although, you know, it has plastic frets as well. These are plastic frets with just a little uh, metal paint on them, which will probably wear off. Or get yourself an outdoor ukulele, or get yourself a flight travel ukulele, but that really isn't an all plastic ukulele. So, Unless you're looking for something to decorate your classroom with, which is what this ukulele is destined for, um, to be hung in my music room, where I teach at a Spanish immersion school, where we do actually do a number of activities with the Dia de los Muertos. Unless you're buying it for that reason, for the looks as sort of a novelty piece or something to display in your home, um, and it is a plastic ukulele too, by the way, not like a classic wood piece of art or something, steer clear of this one. I'm not saying that all ukadelics are bad. I'm saying that the ukadelics that came before this in 2019 were better, and I'm very certain that the, the latest ukadelics that came out later, 2021 maybe, 2020, maybe it wasn't very long, that now I think for sure have a laminate soundboard again. Check those out as well. I think you might be happier um, altogether with the experience of either one of those sides of the instrument rather than this one. So what rating would I give it? Unfortunately, because of the flawed nature of the ukulele, it's a one out of five. And again, it's a piece of history. So yes, you can buy these new. If you see one, 
probably don't buy it unless it's really, really cheap and you're just looking in to hang up something. But um, the older versions of this, as well as perhaps the newer versions of the Kudelic and the new versions of the Waterman are probably a safer bet. I'd avoid all the old Waterman if I could possibly do so and just look at other solutions. All right, so thank you for joining me for this review of the Kala Ukadelic by Kala Sugar Skulls Ukulele. It's the K-A-S-U-Skulls Ukulele. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll be back soon with some more Uke stuff for you.